Welcome back to Shanti Finance. As you know, I am in my Durga Puja fervor and continue to present artworks related to the festival. Um, countless number of ideas are coming to my mind. It was very, very hard for me to kind of come upon that this would be the best idea to work on. Uh, amongst all of the different ideas, what finally caught my attention is the concept of third eye. The third eye, also known as the inner eye, is a mystical and spiritual concept, and uh, it is speculative that it provides perception beyond ordinary sight. Madhurga is adorned by the third eye. The right eye represents action. The left eye represents uh, the desire, and the middle eye stands for knowledge. And knowledge is symbolized by fire. And that brought me to the concept of a scenario with a fiery background and hence came into picture the world that is currently into a turmoil situation because of various man-made and natural reasons. So I thought that let's kind of uh, focus on the concept of third eye and keep working on it and hoping that the divine intervention of the third eye will bring everything back to order from the realm of chaos. And that is the thought behind the painting. I'm working with acrylics on a canvas panel. And without much ado, let's get on to the tutorial. I'm starting off with a toned canvas and I have toned it with a cadmium yellow color. And then I am applying cadmium red on it which is a uh, part uh, half water and half a uh, cup paint mixture and applying it randomly and then I'm coming back and uh, using a couple of uh, sheets of plastic and randomly putting on top of the uh, surface and uh, kind of uh, pushing out the excess paint and then I'm going to take it off and let it dry once it is completely dry, I am first painting shapes of fire in white. Uh, since um, the colors that I'm going to use for painting fire are orange, red, and yellow, and brown, and all of these are kind of transparent colors, so it is important for me to first start with an opaque color. That's why I'm starting off with titanium white. And later, I'm going to apply very many uh, layers and sh shades of red, yellow, brown um, in the shapes of fire and uh, um, do the fire kind of painting. Um, for the darkest darks, I'm also pulling in some uh, blue along mixed with my um, red and uh, raw umber. At this point, I drew out my eyes roughly with a white a charcoal pencil and now I'm blocking it with a mixture of raw umber, a cad yellow and now I am using a mix of raw umber, cad yellow, white and uh, crimson. Uh, now throughout this painting I have used these only these few colors of mostly white, black, cobalt blue, raw umber, cadmium, red, uh, cadmium yellow, and crimson. And I have uh, used various tones of it. I have mixed various shades of these uh, colors to get the different shadows and lights and darks that I require. You can see that um, I am blocking in the general um, lights and darks first. And uh, I'm being very messy um, in the very beginning. It kind of looks very ugly in the beginning. I'm being very messy because I know that I will come back with a mop brush and smooth out all the brush strokes. And also I'm going to take multiple layers of paint to reach the level of darkness or opaqueness that I am intending to be there finally. And so if I'm going to use multiple layers, I do not need to worry too much about my initial layers of paint and initial brush strokes. If a little bit shows initially, it will all get covered in the subsequent layers. Um, now I'm coming back with the darks. For the darks, I'm predominantly using a mix of raw umber 
and cobalt blue and sometimes I pulled in a little bit of black or a little bit of red depending on whether I wanted it to be a little reddish or a little, or to be a little bit blackish. And once the initial base color of the eye uh, which was a mix of uh, flesh tint itself uh, was applied I came back with titanium white and mixed with a little bit of cat yellow and a little bit of crimson and uh, blocked the general um, area of the eye. You will see that I am constantly working on the shadows, lights and darks and uh, smoothening out the colors with a mop brush. Initially I started off with a fairly small headed filbert brush but later you will see that as I'm moving on to finer and finer details I will move on to a detail brush and a round brush. So uh, depending on what is your comfort level, um, switch your brushes and use the brush that you're most comfortable with. This is a fairly small painting. It's an 8 by 10 um, canvas panel. So I have to use like smaller brushes. Uh, but it, it is all a matter of what you're comfortable with. Whichever brush you're comfortable with, work with that. Obviously details work better with detail brushes and round brushes so eventually for the very fine details you will have probably have to pull in um, you know, pull out your detail brushes as well. Now uh, for the shadows of the eye areas I have used a mix of again the same few colors raw umber, cad yellow, crimson and white. Uh, just varying the proportions each time of this color I can get like seven or eight sh shades and for the darkest darks like where I wanted to um, like paint the shadow of the eyelid under the um, over the eyeballs and for the hair and the eyebrows for that I have added a little bit of cobalt blue and at the very end I'll pull in a little bit of black as well um, to get the level of darkness but um, as for the flesh tint mostly I have just varied the proportions of these four colors red yellow white and um, raw umber and got in all the shades that you need so you see this this painting is fairly limited palette in fact very limited palette painting and yet I'm getting such a multitude of colors and uh, um, shadows as well uh, for some of the shadows areas I've also pulled in some purples which I mixed cobalt blue and crimson to get my purple so depending on which area of the eye and uh, I am following a reference photo from Pixabay for the general shape of the eye but you know it's just for a reference it doesn't really do a lot um, and uh, for the eyeballs when I start off with it which will be soon you will see that I first blocked uh, out with the general outline with a shade of romber mixed with a little bit of white and then I am pulling in shadows around it with a little bit of blue mixed with uh, white. Then I'm going to add several layers of white and uh, cat yellow and crimson mixed in different proportions for the white area of the eye and for the eyeballs I have used yellows and browns and uh, for the lighter parts and for the darker ones I started off with a mix of romber and brown I'm, I'm sorry romber and cobalt blue and then at the very end I pulled in a little bit of black for the darkest of darks so that's the general idea of color palette that I've used for the eyes or rather the inside of the eyes, white of the eyes and the eyeballs. So I, I have kind of tried to keep this video very detailed so that you can understand step by step how to paint the eye. Um, the concept of third eye here um, is of something that is very unique to some of the cultures some of the ancient cultures 
and it appeals to me because to me the spiritual and philosophical idea of the third eye is very close to our subconscious and on the occasion of durga puja amma durga has the third eye and i think that represent our human subconscious which we often let um, dull out because of our consciousness but just wanted to make sure that um kind of hinted towards to let our consciousness be awake at all times now you see that this touch of the little glimmer of white light just adds so much life to the eye and you see that as i'm building on layers and layers and layers uh it that is what actually makes um any painting realistic for realistic looking eyes face whatever you want to paint the layering is important and it is important to use the, the contrast and lights and shadows to your advantage now a third eye is not ever seen in a human being so i could not find a reference photo for that so i kind of had to improvise a little bit i just used an eye picture and uh, then i thought this would probably be it when if it is a third eye and worked on like that uh whether it works for you or not it's up to you to up to the viewer to decide let me know in your comments what you think about it and uh, let me know if uh, anything uh, in the painting is confusing and you want me to explain it to you and uh, uh, generally a lot of uh, artists try and do a mock up in adobe and several other softwares um that help them to do a mock up before they do the painting uh, well I wouldn't say I'm lazy to do that but uh, that's kind of a technical uh, part that I want to avoid because there is already a lot of technicalities that I have to deal with with for editing and all these purposes so I avoid that so all of these mock ups are in my head so I'm always scared that it might not turn out the way uh, it uh, looked in my head and I'm so so glad that it worked out at least this particular time Now that the eyes are more or less finished um I am coming back and uh, doing painting more of the flames again in the shades of yellow red brown and white just to incorporate the background and the foreground together I don't want the eyes to look that they are, are not a part of the painting and um, or the fire or the background is not a part of the painting i wanted the, uh, both the background and the subject that is the uh, eyes to kind of blend in um, into each other when i'm painting it now the white flames are kind of pretty important because that is the that is kind of what brings about the highlight part However, you have to be very careful about using the white flames because if you use it too much, uh, then it might lose the brightness of the other colors because titanium white is a pretty opaque color. And now I can see that I'm kind of randomly blocking in different shapes that are of the shape of flame and using the same few colors. and uh, for the fire again i have used multiple references um that i just google off the internet i haven't really kind of uh, copied anything but just looked at various references various uh, shapes of flames so that i made sure that it looks realistic because um um when you're painting ref- realistic it is always always advisable to use references as much as possible that is the best way to get the details look like the reality and here i'm using a fairly large filbert brush to do the flames if you're not comfortable with that big of a brush do feel free to switch on to a smaller round brush or even a detail brush whatever works for you 
um, for the flames um, I, I have always felt that the filbert used sideways um, gives a very nice sharp edge and for the final uh, few touches in the um, in the flames I've also used some blue in order to bring out the contrast in between the brightest highlights of white flame or yellow flame and the darks so there we are at the end of the painting do not forget to hit the subscribe button and thank you for watching once again and let me know what you think about this painting and tutorial and my channel